I'm going to be one of the commentators on this picture, and we felt it would be a good idea if I told you first a little of what we're aiming at. It's the personal touch, I suppose, but you see, this happens to be a very personal sort of film. And it's personal because either you or your father or your mother or both may easily be in it. And if you're not in it in the flesh, well, I don't see how you can fail to be in it in the spirit. Because, you see, it's a picture of life in Great Britain between the two great wars. Twenty years, that was. It's a long time. But we don't want you to get the idea that it's a sort of historical textbook, because it isn't that at all. It's more a, an impression. It's an impression of what people did during those years, what they felt like, what they looked like, what they thought. It's anything to do with people. And there's just one thing. If you're too young to remember some of this and you feel you'd like to know more about it, well, I should just ask Mum and Dad. Only not till the picture's over. And so, in the second decade of the 20th century, the sheltering walls of the Victorian era crumbled before the blast of war. Men fought in the heavens, in the depths of the sea, and millions died for a mound of earth. Passchendaele, Ypres, the Somme, the long, long trail went winding. It seemed that peace could never come. And then, at the eleventh hour, peace came. At the eleventh hour of the eleventh day of the eleventh month, 1918. job and they were proud of us. Us who'd done the fighting and those who'd led us. Brass hats whose names had been household words for years. Allenby who took on the Turks in the Middle East. Admiral Jellicoe and General Smuts. Admiral Beatty. And then the French chief came over, Marshal Foch. our own commander-in-chief himself, Haig. Yes, there he was, giving out medals for services rendered. <laughs> that day we all felt like generals. They called us heroes. But I don't think any of us worried much about that. The great thing was to be back one piece.
one of the unknown dead they chose at random and brought his body home. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. brings news from Ireland of more skirmishes between the Irregulars and the Rebels. Every day brings new arrests. When de Valera spoke this week, it was the occasion for yet another riot, when Ireland's troubles never end. Telegram to Air Ministry, London, stop. Landed Clifton, Ireland, 8.40 a.m. GMT, stop. Total time for Atlantic crossing, 16 hours, 12 minutes, stop. Signed, Captain Alcock, pilot, Lieutenant Brown, navigator. The first women to take their seats in Parliament, Lady Astor and all. I always said a woman's place was in the house, but Blimey, I didn't mean that one. <laughs> 